Colonel Wesley Martin. Apparently, apparently you know. Apparently you know him. Thank you, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, and I love you. Thank you, my friend. And I'd like to today speak once again on behalf of my brothers and my sisters at Ashraf. One would think with as many great American leaders for democracy that have spoken out and stated that State Department, you are wrong in having the MEC on the terrorist list, the MEK on the terrorist list. When we have men like John Bolton, Tom Ridge, Louis Free, and the list goes on and on and on. As a second lieutenant, I learned if everyone tells you one thing and you think something else, maybe you, you're wrong and you should readjust and uh, come to a better conclusion than what you have. And yet, our State Department bureaucrats don't seem to get the message. Every day, Maliki aligns himself closer with Tehran while the U.S. administration downplays this connection. To claim, as Vice President Joe Biden recently did, that Iranian influence is greatly exaggerated is a discredit to all the coalition forces who fought and died and bled in Iraq and to all the Iraqi citizens and the Ashraf residents who have paid that price. To be part of the solution and to show good faith in the UN refugee determination process, MEC leadership agreed to the transfer from Ashraf to Haria. Now, as we all know, 2,000 members have made that move. This relocation has been with numerous problems. Continually, the call is rendered by the United Nations and the U.S. State Department that this relocation requires cooperation of all parties concerned. Unfortunately, the party that's always conceded is the, ME, is the MEK. Excuse me. The Iraqi government has created one difficulty after another. It should not be forgotten it was the Iraqi government that prevented the United Nations from traveling to and conducting the process at Camp Ashraf. Furthermore, the officer in charge of this transfer mission is the same person who commanded the 2009-2011 Iraqi military attacks on Camp Ashraf, General Qasim. Camp Haria, less than one half a square mile in size, is correctly referred to by Rudy Giuliani as a concentration camp. Before the arrival of the first bus from Ashraf, Camp Haria had already been looted by the Iraqi military. Cabinets that could have been used for storage were intentionally damaged. The black water storage tank ruptured the first day due to lack of maintenance. The water treatment plant, built in 2006 by the United States military, had been stripped by the Iraqis. Now the MEK must pay for water to be shipped in. The quantity of water has never met any of the population that has been there. Often part of the problem has been UN Ambassador Kobler himself. He has proven to be very quick to accept Maliki's word on most everything, even assuring everyone that Haria was in good shape. The pristine photos he provided to support his claim were not the same facilities our brothers and sisters found upon arrival. Even, from Ash uh, getting, even getting from Ashraf to Haria has been loaded with obstacles. The Iraqi government has not honored the formal agreements for which was brought forward. This includes generators for power, vehicles for transport and disabled vehicles, uh, disabled people, medical equipment supplies, and personal items. Having worked both with the Iraqi government and the former National Liberation Army of the MEK, I can understand what's happening. 
the denial of supplies and equipment will make life that much more difficult for the residents. Also, the more that is left at Camp Ashraf means the more the Iraqi government can loot. On the very last convoy, two trucks of personal clothing disappeared. When MEK leadership directly questioned General Kazem on this, he responded that the clothing belonged to the Prime Minister's office. The very searches of the convoy and people prior to the departure have been the exercises in harassment and brutality. What has been searched gets searched again and again. The process lasts for a day and a half without rest. It was on this process that our good friend Badia, a 48-year-old engineer, died of a stroke. In another instant, the Iraqi military commenced beating Ashraf residents to include with batons resulting in 29 MEK members injured. Despite all this torment and all the years of torment, our brothers and sisters at Ashraf have not broken ranks. That speaks great. And that speaks about their dedication to democracy and their dedication to the cause of liberty. In her testimony to Congress last February, Secretary Clinton stated there have been some minor, minor issues with the transfer of the Camp Liberty. During that same testimony, when asked about the delisting, Secretary Clinton stated that it is directly related to the movement from Ashraf to Haria. Once again, this proves Hillary Clinton and her department fails to understand the former National Liberation Army. The NLA was the military arm of the MEK with one mission only, direct military engagement with the Iranian government, not the US, nobody else, not the Israeli government, the Iranian government. It never had any other mission. NLA membership surrendered every one of their weapons and the leadership signed a ceasefire agreement with the United States military. You have heard me say many times before, no one despises war more than the warrior and no one despises the breaking of a ceasefire agreement or a surrender agreement than the warriors who secured it and worked it, and yet we watched our State Department do exactly that over the honor and the dignity of the United States military. For Secretary Clinton to associate the move from Camp Ashraf to Haria as being part of the requirements for delisting the MEC requires her belief that somehow out of Ashraf and Liberty under all this Iraqi security, they are capable of breaking out, somehow getting to Baghdad International Airport and launching an attack on the United States. It is impossible. In April, State Department's Ambassador Benjamin stated that Cong uh, before Congress that the foreign terrorist designation is dependent upon seeing what weaponry the MEK still has Ashraf. This was later repeated and quoted by Robert Lowe at the Court of Appeals, and somehow they would have to wait till the Iraqi government got in there to look for all those weapons. Dave Phillips has testified before you. I have. Leo McCloskey has testified. We have gone through that compound over and over again. There are no weapons at Camp Ashraf, and to suggest that the word of the corrupt Iraqi government is to be taken over the American officers who served there is nothing short of despicable. <laughs> Once Camp Ashraf is cleared of the MEK, the Iraqis are going to, going to go into loot, just like they did Liberty and all other U.S. vacated compounds and following the fall of Saddam Hussein. Evidence then will be generated. Suddenly, they will come up with a bunch of weapons and declare that they had been found at Camp Ashraf, and State Department is going to embrace those like a mother embracing her child and say, oh, this is the fact that we have been looking for. State Department intelligence specialists and Hillary Clinton herself claim to have highly classified information about MEK's terrorist activities. None of that information has been put up for external review. Once again today, Ambassador Bolton 
Tom Ridge, and I jointly challenged State Department to produce that information and put it up to OWA top secret clearances and background investigations. Just like Tom Ridge said, show me. On the 23rd of March, Senator Blunt also said, show me the facts, show me the information. He's still waiting. Up to this point, State Department has continu continually, uh, continually been assuring Congress they are aggressively working on designation and would comply with the court decision. 24 months in going to comply with a six-month mandate is not compliance. Obviously, State Department has a different meaning of aggressively working than the Defense Department. The U.S. military spent less time in World War I than the State Department spent in making this one decision. As mentioned, State Department intelligence claims to have classified information that can be shared with no one. These are the same exact people who declared Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. They paid Chalabi $33 million for that information. Now 4,500 American warrior deaths later, the State Department intel is serving Hillary Clinton no better than they serve Colin Powell. I further submit to the, uh, the United Nations Executive Branch and the United Nations, the United States Ex Executive Branch and the United Nations are doing no better supporting an effective resolution to the Ashraf situation than either organization, organization did to support General Dallaire's heroic fight to stop the genocide in Rwanda. Sadly, I see a similar fate preparing to take place. And yet, our State Department continues to stumble along, offering appeasements exchange for dialogue that goes nowhere. The ultimate victims of these appeasements are the Iranian people themselves. Somehow, State Department bureaucrats think continuing to demonize the MEK as terrorists will dissuade the Iranian government from becoming more difficult. I fail to understand this logic. Iran is developing nuclear weapons capability, plan to kill the Saudi ambassador on American soil, is the primary supporter of the brutal Syrian government, kidnapped American hikers for half a million dollars ransom each, sentenced a Canadian citizen to death for alleged spying, sentenced 12 Iranian Christians to death on Easter Sunday, and the list goes on. It is time to stop appeasing the fundamentalist government of Iran and start supporting humanity. Concerning Ashraf and achieving that goal, the best thing the United States can do to remove the, is to remove the MEK from the terrorist list, hold the Maliki government accountable for its misconduct, and bring former NLA members out to safe locations. And I would like to say this. Right now, State Department is saying, okay, we're looking at bringing out 100 to the United States. Right now, before you, I say I am ready at my place in Western New York to sponsor 10 members of the MEK. Thank you.